Hi, my name is Dennis Walcott, and I'm the president and CEO of Queens Public Library System. Queens Library is about more than just books. It's about transforming lives and building strong communities. Whether you want to learn English, improve your career, discover a great read, or need homework help, Queens Library will get you where you want to go for free. We have 62 branches across the borough of Queens. So visit us in person or online. We hope to serve you soon. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rosalind Nieves. Welcome to Queen's Perspectives. I'm in Jamaica at the Queen's Library with Queen's Library President and CEO, Dennis Walcott. Dennis, thank you so much for this invitation. And it's a pleasure seeing you. Thank you. The Queen's Library is one of the largest library systems in the world. How many locations do you have and how many people rely on your services? So we have 65 locations of which 62 are libraries and other three are programs. So we have a tech program, we have a pre-K program, universal pre-K, and we also have a teen library in Far Rockaway. And we just do a lot of work with all of our residents. Every Queens resident lives approximately a mile from a Queens library. And we have 11 million people who come through our doors on a regular basis. So uh, on an annual basis, we see 11 million people. So we're very happy with that. So the Queens Library serves such a diverse population in the world. How do you manage it all with such a diverse community? Well, a couple of ways. One, we have great staff. So our staff are outstanding. They represent the communities that we serve as well. Uh, and then we have fantastic programs and services that we offer. And so we're always looking to innovate and do different things, uh, from English second language classes to uh, general programs from knitting and sewing classes. So we have a wide array of things. We had a samba concert uh, recently here. We had a graduation of our uh, Jamaica Feast program, which is an entrepreneur program for people who want to be cooks and owners of businesses. And so we do a variety of things to attract the community to us, but beyond that, we also go out to the community as well. That's wonderful. And with the times changing and everybody using technology, especially all our millennials and seniors are using iPhones and iPads, what are you doing for technology? Technology, we're always upgrading. We have our cyber center in our libraries. We have a variety of tech opportunities available for people. But beyond the tech side of the world, we also offer basic services. So recently, we just put in place what we call our bike library, where we have a bicycle that's outfitted uh, hold books to be able to register people for library cards, having the ability of having Wi-Fi capability. So we try to do a variety of things to bring people to the library who have technology needs, but also going out to the community from something with our bookmobiles and our bike library. And what are you doing for children under the oh, age of six? We have a great array of programs, and we have programs that focus on reading, on literacy, on technology, on STEM, you name it. We have a variety of services that we offer for our children, six and under, as well as those who are older as well. Uh, right now, where we're conducting our interview, we're in our teen library at the Central Queens Library. And again, we have a number of services that we offer here. So anything that an adult receives, children receive as far as services as well. And what are your normal operating hours for the Queen's Library? Well, it varies. Here at the Central Library, we're open seven days a week. Our Flushing Library is also open seven days a week. Uh, other libraries are open six days a week. And here, we're open nine normally to nine on weekends, slightly shorter hours. Uh, on the other branch libraries, we're open from 12 to 8, sometimes 10 to 6. So that varies. So people should just take a look at their website and check on the hours of the library in their particular area. And what is the mission of the library? Library is really there to educate, to inform, to provide a really free open door for any individual who wants to get type of services or information. When you really think about it, the libraries are the last truly open democratic institution in our society. Anyone can walk in the door, sit down and read, get a service, 
or do nothing. Uh, we are here to serve the public's needs. Uh, we had recently what we call our 31-hour marathons and uh, marathon at Corona and Pen uh, Peninsula, and we provided a variety of services for 31 straight hours. So we are always looking to innovate and making sure that people are able to get information based on what they're looking for, but also having services available, including concerts, uh, forums, book forums. I hosted a forum around a month and a half ago with Nelson Mandela's grandson. And it was a jam-packed forum, and he had so much to say about his grandfather. So we do a variety of things along that line. So the Queens Library is not just about books anymore. Not just about books. Even though books are very important, we did a strategic plan uh, several years ago, and the number one thing that came up were collections and making sure that we had up-to-date collections. And in addition to that, though, Queens Library is about services as well and programs. So normally I'm at the front door here at Central at 9 a.m. to greet the customers on weekdays, and people basically go to three areas when they come in at 9 o'clock. They go to our cyber center to use our computers. They go to sit down and read and take advantage of the collections. And they go to our training programs for training services as well. Uh, we have a job business academy where people get help in resume development, uh, how to interview, how to really talk in job interviews. And so people come for those services as well as Tuesdays and other days we have free movies available to people both in the afternoon and the evening. And then we're known for our concerts as well. And anything specifically for seniors? Seniors get a variety of services. In addition to seniors, we offer programs that really teach basic things. I mean, we have times sewing classes, we have programs for seniors who uh, need other types of support. You talked about technology earlier. While it's not solely geared to seniors, seniors take advantage of our technology uh, training sessions as well. In addition to that, we have language classes that we offer. In one of our branches, we have people who are taking Korean who are not Korean and have become very proficient in talking uh, Korean. So we offer those types of services. And in addition to that, we have what's called a mail -a book program, where people who are not just seniors, but people who are infirmed who can't get out, we will mail them their book. So people take advantage of our mail -a book services, not just for seniors, but seniors are definitely one of the major recipients of our mail book services. Those are all awesome programs and services. Let's talk about Culture Pass. Tell me about that program. Culture Pass has been fantastic, and it's a, a partnership with the Department of Cultural Affairs and museums and cultural institutions throughout the city where people have their library card or they have to sign up for a library card to be eligible to get a Culture Pass. And we saw when this was first launched a 47% increase in people signing up uh, for that period when Culture Paris was first announced. And as a result of that, people have been able to take advantage of the cultural institutions, the rich, diverse cultural institutions uh, in New York City, and at the same time, get a library card. So all of us have benefited. And Culture Pass is something that has been uh, ongoing, and people sign up as families and as individuals as well. We're definitely going to take a whole tour of the facility to bring all of our viewers into the Queens Central Library. So what are some of your best spots in the Queens Library? I know they're all great for you, but tell me, what do you enjoy best? Is it the team area, the technological area? Which areas of the library? Well, I'm going to punt on that because all the areas are great. And But I think what's unique about the library, we're always doing things in a different way. So for example, over the summer, uh, we decided to put a big screen TV on the main floor of the, uh, the library. And the purpose of that was for people to see the World Cup. And it was really a fascinating tableau because the diversity of Queens and the diversity of the city were sitting in the chairs watching the World Cup. And it was an interesting contrast of the old vision of a library and the new way libraries operate. Because one time when someone scored a goal, people started cheering as they do at a soccer match. But at the same time, a librarian was walking by and said, shh, lower. And I told a person, I said, you can't tell them, lower. This is the World Cup. And so that contrast was great. Uh, we have an art exhibit right now that's taking place in conjunction with the Queens Museum as well. And so that's something very interesting that's different. And then the other thing that you'll see are just people enjoying themselves and taking advantage of the opportunities of really, or there's books or training programs or sessions, and the Business Academy, as I talked about before, 
really going on, or in classes. And so you'll see that when you tour around as well. I think the beauty of what you'll see, though, is diversity of the borough and the diversity of the city. That, to me, is the thing to really look for, because uh, that diversity is definitely captured here at Queens Library, whether it's here at Central or throughout our libraries in the borough of Queens. And that, to me, excites me more than anything else. And you see all backgrounds, all nationalities, because we don't say who and are you, you and what you are. And you cater to immigrants. Well, we cater to immigrants. Matter of fact, uh, we recently conducted a training around immigrants and refugees coming in. Uh, we have one of our programs that focuses on immigrant populations called the New Americans Program. And they work in a number of areas where we have diversity books and materials and uh, reading opportunities for people to take advantage of, concerts, as I indicated. So you have that going on as well. So you have all these diverse types of things taking place at the Queens Library, which I think captures the borough and captures the city. This is wonderful. Any other new projects that you're working on that's going to come to the Queens Library down the pipeline? Well, we have a new library that will be opening up sometime in 2019 at Hunters Point, and so we're very excited about that. Recently, we just had a groundbreaking, basically, of uh, a library that will open in 2021 out at Far Rockaway, which is going to double, if not more than double, the size of the space at Far Rockaway. So that'll be taking place. But I think for me, aside from the buildings, just the various programs and innovations that are taking place, always something new and different that we're trying to do to serve our customers. We want to be very responsive to our customer needs. And so we're always looking to do that. One of the things we're going to be exploring is a partnership with an institution to expand Wi-Fi capability outside our doors as well. Uh, so that way when people walk by, they don't have to come inside to get Wi-Fi. Uh, they have the ability within a 200 feet range to get Wi-Fi capability at several libraries. So we're always looking to do things in partnership with other institutions as well. What I've always loved about the library is that it's a safe place to live, learn, and just play. People feel comfort. I mean, they walk in knowing that they will not be asked questions. Uh, they obviously have to follow rules, but at the same time, whatever they want to do, including just sitting and doing nothing, uh, they have the ability to do that at our library, and we're very proud of that. And I think the beauty for me is also that we also have the programs to bring people in. Uh, part of our Job Business Academy, there was a group of doctors coming in from another country, and they were interviewing for jobs outside of New York City, so in places like Nebraska and Iowa. And so they wanted to become more acculturated in how to both learn about those communities, but also the interviewing techniques that go along with that. And so through our staff, they were able to sit down and get pointers. And it served as a referral network for other doctors who were coming from this country as well. So that way, as they had more doctors come in to interview for jobs there, they knew to go to Queens Library. I was just recently at a library where someone walked in off the street who was from another country and uh, was looking for some adult learning services that we provided at this particular library. So that welcome mat is always open. And one of the things we try to do is make sure to say, Queens Library is open for everyone. And now we have a kindness campaign that's taking place. And that's really to reinforce the value of kindness and what it means in society and having programs and uh, books to reinforce that value as well. So we always are looking to do things to make sure that people both understand that we're here, but also make sure that we're responsive to their needs. Thank you so much. I'm going to take my full tour right now. That's it for today's program. If you missed any part of this segment, just go to qptv.org forward slash Queens Library. I'm Rosalind Evans, and I'll see you next time on Queens Perspectives. Thank you so much for watching.